So speaking of tomorrow, our next speaker is Tom Zimmerman. He's actually a friend of mine from the Almaden lab that we have in California. We, worked on a, we got to work on a project together on metal detectors, which detected uh, toxic metals in drinking water. And actually, we call him MacGyver, affectionately, around the lab, because it seems like he can take anything and put it together and bring ideas to life. For example, paper clip plus toilet paper roll equals sensor, somehow. <laughs> so with that, I am going to welcome Tom to the stage to tell you about the wonderful world and the, light, and the life in a drop of water. <laughs> As an inventor, I like to repurpose consumer electronics to solve problems. And as a boy, I like toys, televisions, and photography, but not for the reasons you think. I like them for the magic inside. I had to figure out how things worked, so I took them apart. And I put these ideas in my brain in what I call my bag of tricks. So that any time I had a solve to, to solve a problem or I wanted to invent something, I would reach into my bag of tricks and find a solution. At first, I did these things to entertain my friends. Like, for example, I hooked a television to my stereo so I could make light shows. And it worked really well for Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. In the old days before the internet, we were easily entertained. But as I got older, I started applying my bag of tricks to the real world. For example, when I got to college, I learned about greenhouse gases and global warming. So I did my research on the stability of wind turbines. Later on, a friend told me about the plight of sea turtles. So I took a motion detector and put it right in the sea turtle nest. And I took that information and put it in the cloud using a $10 cell phone so I could remotely monitor their health and even predict their hatching. Later on, I was fooling around with a digital camera. I took the lens off and put some salt right on the image sensor. And with that, and I, uh, I put an LED on top, and so I made microscopic photograms. Now, looking for a more interesting subject, I went to the pet store and got some plankton and put a drop of it right on the image sensor. And what I saw was amazing. I saw these creatures roaming around, and I was really amazed by it. And I found out if I used two LEDs, I could make a stereo movie. And using a little bit of Python programming, I could calculate the 3D position of each of these plankton as they, as they swam around. I was so enamored by the life in a, a drop of water. At that point, all I knew about plankton was from reading and, and watching uh, SpongeBob SquarePants, which means I knew nothing. But then uh, I started reading about these creatures, and I learned some really amazing facts. Did you know that plankton produce two-thirds of the oxygen we breathe, that they're the greatest sequester of carbon they take carbon dioxide from the air and tuck it safely at the bottom of the ocean, helping decrease uh, global warming. And they're the baby food to practically every species of fish. So if you like sushi or you like to breathe, you got to thank plankton. And now for the bad news. We're killing them. We're killing them from all the carbon we're dumping into the air by burning fossil fuels. You see, they can't keep up with that amount of carbon. And so we need to find some way to change this. Plankton live in a complex ecosystem that's really hard to study. Biologists, what they basically do is drag a net through the water. It's like a big nylon stocking. And they collect the plankton in jars with preservatives, which kills them. And then they bring them to the lab and look at them under a microscope. Well, that's like trying to understand a football game by taking pictures of the players while they're sleeping on the bus after the game. But the good news is, in the next five years, 
will be able to combine remote sensing with artificial intelligence to monitor plankton in their natural environment continuously. And we can do this um, by combining those two technologies. And I happen to have invented a microscope that's perfect for monitoring plankton. Here's how I do it. I take the image sensor, like from your cell phone, and I put two LEDs above, and I put it in a waterproof container. Now, that only solves half the problem. How do I take that tremendous amount of information and make something usable and actionable? Well, remember I told you I like to recycle consumer electronics? Well, I can take the AI chips that are being uh, developed for smart cameras that do things like face recognition and recognize cute little bunnies and other objects, and I can reprogram, I can retrain the neural network in that chip to recognize plankton. And not only that, I can recognize their behavior like eating. Now, why would that be important? Well, it turns out plankton like to eat plankton, and that's good because that balances the ecosystem. And nature is all about balance. Now, let me give you an example. There's a plankton called copepod, and they like to eat algae, and that's great. Except there's a version of algae which has a toxin which gets the copepod drunk. Now, you would think that's fun, right? We're here in Las Vegas. But actually, that's not cool, because usually plankton dart around like this, trying to avoid predators. But when they get drunk, they merrily swim in a straight line, which makes it really easy for predators to knock them off. So when you have the copepod population goes down, the, the, um, the algae population explodes until they overpopulate so much they die, releasing toxins that's poisonous to humans and fish. And as their bodies decay, they suck up all the oxygen, result, which results in floating dead fish and this yucky green toxic stuff that washes up on our shores. Not good. Well, by using these AI microscopes, we can deploy them in the, in the environment and network them through the um, cloud to enable scientists to detect these disturbances. Think of it as a bio-early warning system to alert scientists so they can intervene before catastrophe. And since plankton forms the bottom of the food chain, taking care of plankton is not only good for them, it's good for all of us. Thank you.